What's up, CFO gang? It's your boy, Jay Tuck. Top of the morning with Tuck, man. You know, it's Wednesday, hump day. Had to get the workout in, stay strong mentally, physically, and spiritually, and all that, man. So welcome to the CFO channel. If you're new, do your boy a huge favor. Comment, like, subscribe, somewhere down there, somewhere down there, somewhere down there, there. Yeah, and be sure to turn that notification bell to stay updated with all Dallas Cowboys content from this channel. Also, shouts out to everyone who dove into the chat last night for the live stream, and I appreciate each and every one of you guys. So if you don't know, what we spoke about last night is the winning formula of how the Dallas Cowboys will be contenders in the 2021 season. So we didn't talk just from emotion, just from fandom, but we actually broke it down. So if you missed it, take a look at this. In health, we, we get that, but from the, strictly from the analytics point, I want you guys to look at what the Super Bowl champs have done throughout their season in the past 10 years. All right. Now, there's one key factor, and shout out to my guy, Nix, right? Because we had a conversation about this yesterday. What is the special sauce when it comes to being in playoff contention, right? Because, I mean, because you, if you look at the numbers, okay, the offense has been off, but, like, granted, Seattle didn't have the best pass offense, but they had the number one defense, and so that kind of what their anchor was. But there has to be some special ingredient that help mold these teams and propel them to Super Bowl contention. And what that secret sauce is, ladies and gents, is turnover margin. And if you look at it, all these teams except, like I said, the Denver Broncos, they were an anomaly for some reason, you know what I'm saying? But they had a number one defense, but they just didn't get turnovers, right? But teams with pretty much a plus turnover margin. So like I said, man, fire show last night. Shouts out to everyone who tuned into the chat, man, everyone who donated. So definitely turn on the notification bell, man, so you don't miss out on the live shows, man, because we be having fun, we be lit, we be breaking down, we be educating. That's what we do on this channel. But I want to talk about a few things, man. The first thing I want to talk about this morning, on this beautiful Wednesday morning, is Zeke's back, y'all. Zeke's back. And I know a lot of people have been counting Zeke out. Why? I don't know. The man had one bad year. And be quite honest, Cowboys fam, the whole damn team had a bad year last year. So I don't know why we put this bullseye on Zeke's back. But honestly, if you think about it from what we've seen thus far, right? He looks leaner. He looks more focused. He has a chip on his shoulder. He looks more determined. And big end. He gets his offensive line back, right? And another big end, he gets his quarterback back, right? And Dak Prescott. So I feel like once you're able to put Zeke around his offensive line, having Zach Martin out there, Tyron Smith, Lyle Collins, Connor Williams, and Tyler Biotis, you add Dak Prescott, who's a real threat, much more of a threat than Andy Dalton, Ben DiNucci, and Garrett Gilbert in the passing game, right? It's going to keep defenses off balance, which is going to allow Zeke to do what he does naturally best, and that's dive up the middle, get the big plays, you know what I'm saying? And keep the chains moving, you know, feed Zeke, right? And I feel like Ezekiel Elliott's due for a great year. Now, people's been asking me this over and under, over and under, over and under. I guess people are gamblers nowadays, right? They're like, Tuck, do you think that Zeke's going to have over or under 1,500 yards? And if I had to guess right now as things currently stand, I would say under, but just slightly. I would say Zeke will have around maybe 1,300 yards. But uh, like I said, because you think about it, he averaged pretty much in his first career about 89 yards a clip, right? And so you add an extra game for week 17, that'll put him around kind of that threshold of being within the ballpark between 13 to 1500. Now, where my focus is with Ezekiel Elliott is going to be touchdowns, right? Because if you watched last night's show, what's the secret sauce, y'all? Points per game and turnover margin, right? So I think that that's where I'm going to really watch Zeke is how many times does he get in the end zone, and especially in the red zone, because the Dallas Cowboys need to be a lot more red zone efficient than we have been in years past. And so I expect a great year from Ezekiel Elliott. He's not, I don't think he's going to be the NFL rushing leader, because I don't think we need him to do that at this point in Dak's career, right? So I don't think that's going to be the case, but I would say he's going to be top five in rushing yardage as far as the NFL running backs are concerned, man. So uh, he's going to be a, a huge impact and a huge weapon that Mike McCarthy and Kellen Moore are going to figure out how to utilize in a different manner, whether it's the passing game, whether it's in run protection, or sorry, in pass blocking, whether it's in the run game, inside, outside runs, 
in the screen game. I feel like they're going to utilize Zeke in a few different ways than what we're accustomed to seeing, just, you know, the first down dive between the hash. Like, we're not going to do that as much. But still, like I've been saying, what I really want to see from Ezekiel Elliott in 2021 is he's the closer, right? After we didn't carve you up with CeeDee Lamb and Amari Cooper and Michael Gallup and, you know, Blake Jarwin and, and Tony Pollard, and it's the fourth quarter and those defenses are huffing and puffing, it's time for Zeke to get on trucking, man. So that's where I'm really looking out for Zeke to really come in and have an impact. And I feel like Tony Pollard is going to be able to spell Zeke so that way we're not leaning on him as heavily. Because people got to understand, during the Jason Garrett era, we ran the threads off of Zeke's tires early and often, man. So he deserved to kind of get a rest. Like I said, last year, I'm giving a lot of players a mulligan because I think Zeke wanted to take too much on his shoulders last year with Dak being hurt, offense line being out. He felt it was on him. But defense has sat back and said, bro, you ain't got no quarterback. So we're going to stack the box and take you away, right? Now, Zeke, of course, as we talked about last night, has to stop the rumbling, fumbling, stumbling, right? But I think that was just one thing. I don't think that's going to be something we'll see moving forward. So I expect a big year or, you know, a return year from Ezekiel Elliott. But also, y'all, I haven't gotten one yet, but I might as well get one now because it's, it's going to happen. I might as well buy me a Micah Parsons jerseys because I feel like Micah Parsons is going to be something we haven't had in a long time in Dallas. And, and, I, and I feel that, right? I feel like Micah Parsons is about to set the NFL on fire because if you just look at the, the tea leaves, as they were saying, right? You know, everything that Micah Parsons brings to the table, he's so versatile. He's so athletic. There's so many different ways that Dan Quinn is going to be able to utilize this kid. He has no choice but to have a huge impact his rookie year. And I would think that he would be in the defensive player of the year, rookie of the year conversation out the gate. And I feel that because we saw uh, Dan Quinn come out and speak about his edge rushing abilities. You know, they talked about, you know, his edge rushing abilities coming out of Penn State in 2019. Like a lot of things he does, like on film, we ain't had that in Dallas in quite some time, man. So being able to add Micah Parsons to what we already have in house, I feel like Dan Quinn is going to unleash Micah Parsons and he is going to have a great rookie season. I feel it. I just feel it. Just looking at everything, kind of seeing what's going on, seeing how he's locked in. We never had this type of weaponry at the linebacker position. And so we finally got our guy on Micah Parsons. And I expect Dan Quinn to fully utilize Micah Parsons. He's going to be all over the field causing havoc. If you watch my draft video, like I've been saying, if you wanted a true war daddy, a true game disruptor, Micah Parsons would be that pick. Y'all hated me for saying that. But here we are. So definitely, Micah Parsons, I might just go ahead and buy the jersey, bro. Why am I holding out? But another guy, my favorite guy. Yes, my favorite Dallas Cowboys player currently on this roster. And granted, I have numerous. But my guy, CeeDee Lamb, 88. I feel like CeeDee Lamb is going to have that season where everyone starts the little slander. Because everyone's like, oh, he's not better than Justin Jefferson or Chase Claypool and this and that. And the Cowboys shouldn't have drafted CeeDee Lamb. They already had to. We setting all that up this year. I feel like CeeDee Lamb will emerge as the number one wide receiver. Now, when I say that, that's no slight to Amari Cooper. That's no slight to Michael Gallup. Because damn it, it's fun to have all three of them. But I feel like when you start to look out there on the field and who is starting to get those tough matchups and who is that going to when things are on the line, it's going to be CeeDee Lamb. If you kind of see CeeDee Lamb's attitude, whether it's on Instagram or Twitter, he's, he's kind of embracing one of my favorite Dallas Cowboys players, Terrell Owens. Now, he said, get your popcorn ready, bro. And that's one of my favorite quotes from T.O. was get your popcorn ready, man. And I know he's been speaking with T.O. frequently. He's also been speaking with Dez as well. So he's getting the proper mentorship. We saw his workout videos. He's putting on some exercise. He is now growing into being one of those NFL elite players, wide receiver wise, that we all screamed and cried about. Me personally, I cried a little bit on draft night, right, last year. So I expect CeeDee Lamb to be top eight as far as yardage next year in the NFL, right? And so I expect a big season. He will be the leading wide receiver on the Dallas Cowboys. My guy, Nix, I'm willing to run back those wings, right, for CeeDee Lamb. But I'm betting the house on CeeDee Lamb, not only for next year, but just for the foreseeable future, as long as he's a Dallas Cowboy. CeeDee Lamb is going to be something we never had as far as a wide receiver in Dallas because he can do so much. Not only the route running, but he can catch the big plays. He can play the slot. He can play the outside. Big hands. He can go up and get the ball. Like 
he can do a lot. He's really not limited in many capacities when it comes to his skill set. So C. Lamb, I'm betting a house on you, bro. And I might go get the 88 jersey because I already got the 10 jersey, but I might go get the 88 jersey. So I just want to dive in real quick, man. Ezekiel Elliott, Micah Parsons, C. D. Lamb, 2021. Look at alert, Cowboys fans, because I expect they're about to set the NFL on fire. Your boy, Jay Tuckman, comment, like, subscribe, of course. Share the channel. I appreciate everyone. We're growing tremendously. We're trying to make that push to 2,000. Also, follow me on Twitter at JTuck151 and go to CowboysFansOnly.com to get your merch. Have a great Wednesday. Peace. What's up, CFO gang? It's your boy, Jay Tuck. And if you like that content, make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn that notification bell to stay updated with all Dallas Cowboys news. Also, go to CowboysFansOnly.com so you can stay dripped in your official CFO gear and use the code CFOGANG to get 10% off all your purchases. How about them Cowboys?